But I think a lot of these agencies look at this as super painful. Um, but really it's an opportunity to succeed where others can't. You know, so that, that's what small businesses need. They need that help. And that is a massive opportunity. E-commerce is not, it's, it's a fundamental change and a strategic change. It's not going to stop. Brandon, what advice do you give to those asking, how do I grow my company? Yeah, so, you know, it's an interesting thing what, what growth and success is. And so I think in order to, to do that, to succeed, you have to be doing something you love. You have to have a core purpose, a reason to come to work every day. You know, ours is to help democratize technology for small businesses, really to help them thrive and succeed. And then combined with that, with that purpose and that drive, you've got to have a set of values that match the folks that you build as a team around you. So, you know, our, our, uh, our, our, our core uh, values are drive, innovation, uh, respect and agility. And so we've built a team that embodies those things. And uh, in order to grow, I think, you know, everyone's got to be aligned. They have to have the same mission, the same vision. Um, and uh, if you're starting to build that team, I would say find people that meet those, those base requirements and then build a team that can do things better than you can do them, who've been there, done that before, and uh, you'll be unstoppable. Great. Yeah. Um, so what are the biggest challenges of growth? Oh, there's, there's many, many biggest challenges, but uh, you know, building a team is important. But that team um, you know, changes over time as you actually grow. So you say the challenge is a growth. Well, that's, I guess, that if you're growing, you're succeeding, if that's your, your, your vision for what you want to do. And as you change, your org has to change and your people have to change, and it's a trade-off. You know, there's kind of two sort of paradigms out there is, you know, um, the team that got you there is probably not going to be the team that gets you to where you want to go. That's one sort of paradigm. And the other paradigm is dance with who brung you. And uh, both of those things are true to some respect. And I find that if you can keep the team together, there's the people that are there, they can, they can be a big part of it, but you're going to bring, need to bring in other people to do the things and teach all of, all of us of what the things uh, have to, you know, what has to change. What, you know, in growth, you can only grow as fast as the experience of your executive team. And uh, if you want to grow faster than that, what they call hyper growth, I think you need to find someone who's already read that chapter, been there, done that, and can teach the rest of you. And so I think it's really, really important that you can um, bring in that talent or teach that talent or some combination of both. It's, a, it's, not, it's not one or the other. There's always some truth to those, you know, those sayings, dance with who brung you, or the team that got you there is not the team that'll get you to where you want to be. And there's somewhere in the middle. And, you know, our culture, I think everyone's got a place. We have people here for a reason. And so we, we grow that way. For sure. Um, so now for our audience, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that agencies face? Oh, man, agencies, um, depending on, they face all kinds of different challenges depending on their size, right? But a typical agency, I, I assume you're talking about, you know, maybe our sort of ideal customer profile of an agency that has a number of small business customers. What's happening today is that small businesses' needs are evolving. So, you know, they're looking for technology, they're having a heck of a time because they're finding it all over the place and people are calling them and they're trying to buy from different people and they just want someone they can trust. So, you know, they turn to, uh, if they have a banking problem, they go to a bank. If they have a legal problem, they go to a lawyer. When they have a, uh, when these small businesses have a marketing or an advertising pro problem or an e-commerce problem, they turn to an agency. Those agencies need to be able to deliver that solution and it's getting more difficult and more difficult. And so the agency's got to find a way to deal with that. So they need, they need a, they, they, you know, they're using all of these different systems. And so they need to find a way to reduce the vendor clutter. They need a prescriptive system that can help them to succeed. They also want to build their brand and their trust with those customers. So they need products that they can sell as theirs. Um, they need a lot of, so knowledge is a huge huge problem for agencies. I mean, there's, you, you got to keep up with what's happening across many, many different things. You know, uh, whether it's advertising or marketing or e-commerce or security or all of the things that are required for that agency to deliver their solution. So that's a huge problem. 
um, I think for them is to keep up with that knowledge. And so, you know, um, fortunately we've been able, that's where we come in, you know, we're able to give them a platform that allows them to scale, sell all kinds of products they wouldn't know about, give them the knowledge to do that, and then even step in where, you know, they might not have enough customers to, they, to take on a, a certain, sorry, they might not have enough folks in their business, in their agency that can, they can take on that customer, but we can step in and give them those people in the back end to make it happen. All right, now uh, a bit of a fun one for you, Brandon. Sure. So can you describe the most significant mistake you've made as an entrepreneur and what you learned? The most significant mistake? Um, I was probably um, trying to do things on my own without reaching out to people who've been there, done that before. So learning through experience is really expensive. And I've made that mistake more than I probably should have. Um, and I find that you know once you reach out and you open yourself up to other folks, you can get that knowledge you know, a lot easier um, and you have to be able to understand it and heed it and use it. What do you think the rise in e-commerce will mean to Vendasta Partners? Yeah, e-commerce is a tough one. It's a, you know, I was thinking about this uh, a lot lately, obviously with the pandemic. You know, when, when I got into business um, in, I don't want to tell you the day, you know, <laughs> back in the day, I, I, had a, I had a computer store from 89 to 99 and uh, retail sucks. So uh, there's a thing that I can tell you. But I was watching Jeff Bezos and Amazon and companies like that in 1999. And I'm like, I'm going to miss this whole dot com thing. And so, you know, I went into a software company and that's a whole different story. And, and so in 2000, I joined a software company. But I did it because of e commerce. And then I watched e commerce grow to only, uh, only about 17% of businesses pre pandemic could actually do an e-commerce transaction online. Yeah. I mean, they could sell something over the phone and do other things, but a real e-commerce transaction, only 17%. And so when the pandemic hit, there was this huge, so even before the pandemic, let me back up. For, the, for that 20 years that it grew to 17%, a lot of people didn't sell e-commerce to small businesses because while well, there was demand and it's growing, it's really hard to do e-commerce, right? There's a lot of moving parts. You need a website, you need internet, you need security, you need point of sale, you need accounting, and they all have to talk together. So it's like, oh, I'll just do websites. Those things are growing at 20% a year. Let's just sell websites or hire. And so, uh, and that's what folks did. And then when the pandemic hit, it became a requirement. You know, it did a bunch of things, right? E-commerce, remote tools and collaboration, and online education, you know, jumped to the top. And uh, we saw that right away. And uh, so there's all these agencies out here that were selling websites. Um, and making really good money and doing really well and maybe selling advertising and other things. But suddenly the pandemic says, hey, if you can't transact online, you're not in business. And so all these guys selling websites, it found that they were being disqualified if they can't do e-commerce. So they really got only a couple choices, right? Yeah. They can find a way to do e-commerce, which many do. Um, you know, they can you know, find a, a Shopify, a big commerce, a, a Wix or whatever's out there. Or they can find their own tools and learn how to do it. Really hard, takes some time. Or they can partner with somebody, you know, to, to give the whole solution. So I do websites, I'll, I'll find an, a managed service provider that can do the internet and security, and maybe a VAR that can do a value-added reseller that can do the, you know, the accounting and the point of sale systems, and I'll, I'll help build it all together and we'll deliver the solution. That, that works a lot, a lot of people are doing that too. So all of those things are valid. Um, and so that's the opportunity that's in there. You have to find a way to succeed. So I think a lot of these agencies look at this as super painful. Um, but really it's an opportunity to succeed where others can't. You know, so that, that's what small businesses need. They need that help and that is a massive opportunity. E-commerce is not, it's, it's a fundamental change and a strategic change. It's not going to stop. You know, it, the thing I would say though, it's not a, and I keep saying it's a change, I think it's really just an acceleration. Let me make that clear. Yeah. It was already happening. You were gonna have to do it anyway. It just took five years and squished it down into a couple of months. And so, and it's not something that, that is gonna just go away, like if you put your head in the sand. As an agency, you need to embrace the idea of e-commerce. Whether you just have a little piece in there and you partner with other folks to deliver it, that's fine. Or whether you, you know, uh, find a platform like ours that has it built in so you can learn to deliver it and have us help on the parts that you don't know how, or, or, or or, or whether you just do it all yourself. So there's, there's many ways to do it, but I think they have to take advantage of it. 
That's great. Um, so a bit of a different question for sure. you. Sure. But uh, what traits do you look for in leaders? Yeah, well, you know, I think, you know, the definition of a leader is, uh, is somebody that people follow without um, being told they have to through an org structure or anything else. And so when leaders, you know, naturally people tend to follow them. And, um, you know, we got a company full of leaders and uh, it's because we look for them. And we want people that have, you know, a bias for action, um, you know, that are, that are committed to quality, that are curious. Um, you know, we have uh, a, a whole list of leadership qualities, the ones that, that think big. The ones that I like um, are, you know, they can, they, they can also disagree and commit. So, so you, know, we, you know, we make lots of decisions around here. Lots of times it's uh, not the decision maybe even that I want, but given the data or whatever, I make the decision to disagree and commit. And so there's, you know, we have to be aligned and be pulling in the same direction and be a team. And so uh, we, we won't tolerate people um, that can't get along with other people. You know, some of our things, we, we, we have a lot of fun here. You know, it's really, really important that you are part of the culture and have the fun and, and uh, be part of it. So that's what I'm looking for. Leaders, people that, you know, they can make things happen. They're, they're right a lot, deliver results. So those are all things that are really important. Great. Um, so how do you see the mass exodus of remote working disrupting industries and lives? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I'm not even sure it's a mass exodus. I just did something that has to happen with the pandemic right now. You know, we don't have a vaccine and, you know, and uh, for, for safety reasons, people need to work home, home, work home remotely. It's most, you know, it's most important to protect the team. And, um, but I think people are inherently social. Again, I want to go back to this. This is not a new thing. This was happening all the time. If we wouldn't have had the pandemic, this remote trend would have happened. You look at all the companies in the Valley. I mean, I go to see these companies in, in, you know, in, in, in San Francisco or in New York, and I watch these guys with a two-hour commute each way and families, and I wonder why. <laughs> and so I, you know, that trend was already happening. Now we're fortunate we live in a city with a, you know, a two-song commute. <laughs> and uh, it's fun to come to work sometimes, but it's also okay to stay home and do your work where you can you know, concentrate and get lots of things done. But I think what it is, is right now we're trading off of the relationships that we've built up over time. And we can see it when we're hiring new people that they don't have that, you know, that social experience with other people. And, the, and there's a lot of stuff in our company that you learn um, you know, from others. And so the trend has to be that we change intentionally um, to, to build out that knowledge and build a way to work remotely. So we're doing a lot of work to try and make remote work, <laughs> like a ton. And uh, you know, there's good and bad to it. You know, we've got people who, who used to work in Vendasta and moved away who have now are working remotely and working for us again. And we've also lost people who are now working for some company in the US who, who can do that because remote is a thing. So it's not, it's not really going to change, but most people are social. We're a knowledge and collaboration company. I think you're going to see, this is a prediction, put myself out there a bit, companies like Google and Facebook, they're going to have Instead of big central offices, they're going to have hubs. But I think they're still going to require their folks to work within a certain distance of the office and to come in for certain amounts of time because there is work that simply can't be done remotely. Now, there's certain kinds of jobs, yes, you know, maybe uh, uh, some, you know, uh, writing jobs that might not be, you might not have to be in the office, or maybe there's some sales jobs that are better on the road. But they're, for the most part, people are social. And I think that once, uh, once the dust clears, I think you're going to see the roaring 20s come. Just like after 1718, people, you know, went a little wild. I think we're going to see that. And I think, um, you know, the social, uh, I think companies that embrace the dichotomy, so they have people remote, but they still have them um, come together to do the, some of the hard things. Um, I think they'll be the winners. Yeah. Awesome. Um, do you see this shift in remote work as a time of pain or opportunity for agencies? It um, depends how you look at it. So, you know, I, I say, uh, <laughs> I have a saying, I say, you know, being challenged in life is inevitable. 
uh, being defeated is optional. And uh, agencies have this choice. They can look at it like a pain and you know, say, oh, it's awful. Or they can realize that they have a solution that every small business needs. They need e-commerce, they need remote tools and collaboration, and probably they need to do some online learning. You know, that's why we've you know, pivoted to have all of those things in our platform. But the agency can then you know, decide, do I want to embrace this by either partnering with other people by picking up some of those skills myself or, or, you know, and doing it all myself or you know, and building my own brand or, or do I not want to? And so I think it's a, it has to be an opportunity. So for those people that understand it um, and want to embrace it, it's going to be an opportunity. It'll be fun. And for those people that are going to say, I don't want to do it and resist it at every change, it's going to be really hard. And there's going to be you know, some of both. And that'll be a, that'll be a massive challenge for some and it'll be a massive opportunity for others. Awesome, well, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Brandon. Yeah, you're welcome.